डिस्कस अंडमान निकोबार आइलैंड्स और अदर पीपल ऑन अंडमान निकोबार आइलैंड्स ट्राइब्स ऑन अंडमान निकोबार आइलैंड्स um so before that i'll ask you a few questions uh tell me how many um tribes we covered or we can call them how many societies tribes or groups of tribes we covered in the material six six okay how so if it, if it takes shantin and the great nicobar is different then it could no, be no well, can you first tell me what are the main islands andaman and nicobar nicobar okay andaman and nicobar <coughs> on on andaman tell me what are the main uh, groups andaman is only and they are many Ten of great, them. Great, great Andamanis. And there are ten of them. There were ten of them. Okay. Uh, next. Jaravas. Jaravas. Next. Ponges. Ponges. Next. Sentinelis. Sentinelis. And extinct one, Jangi. Extinct one. J I don't remember Jangil. Jangil. Okay. <coughs> so Great Andamanis, Jarawa, Onjis, and Sentinelis, and Jangil. Okay. So okay. Hmm. Okay. Guy three, tell me. Uh, of these five, which is traceless now completely extinct jangil jangil then you uh, which is completely extinct jangil jangil uh next which is the one which is nearly extinct great andamanis great andamanis next great andamanis okay so have a bigger picture of things can you tell me what is the status of this great andamanis are they on main andaman island relocated they are relocated relocated and how many are there now i don't remember number around 50 relocated 50 plus and are they pure andamanis no mixed admixed okay mixed relocated and uh, around 50 okay so and those people are speaking about speaking in creole andamanis some kind of a mix up of the languages okay so uh, okay uh jungle clearly gone great andamanis almost no way relocated um so that is the position uh you have any idea of why these great andamanis uh got extinct who are there around 6000 plus at one time now 50s okay so that gives an idea of how a tribe can be subjected to depopulation are you am i audible yes sir ha ah, okay so gayatri can you continue ha <laughs> ah. how are they reaching near ex um they subject to this case of great andamanis is example of how colonialization and all that okay then what resource to depopulation resource erosion diseases resource erosion erosion diseases okay yes 
so why some people are vulnerable to diseases so when you are gradually exposed you might develop immunity but if it is okay sudden they don't have antibodies for the modern diseases because they stopped evolving long ago and mo when modern people go with their kind of diseases they won't be able to have, face them so one very serious problem with any isolated tribe is that uh, when it comes into contact with modern population it may just get extinct or at least a huge number of them may be eliminated in fact that was how lot of depopulation took place in latin america and africa spread of diseases is one very serious problem okay so spread of diseases resource erosion and simply these people britishers and then later uh, kept on occupying the land okay so that was how this is gone almost and this is gone okay now tell me of these three which are the people who are fiercely protecting their territory jarva sonjas and sentinels 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 are fiercely protecting their territories okay um now who will answer this question okay yam vishal tell me how are they protecting their territory and is it right did you read that material yes sir okay mm. so how how they are use uh, for how uh, they are using bows and arrows they are mm -hmm. not letting outsiders enter anybody in. exactly they use and finally kill their wits brutal mercilessly kill that's all <clears throat> okay what is the nearest human encounter that sentinel is allowed so it was in 1991 by 1991 anthropological the person social. involved was uh, madhumala madhumala and what did she do she tried uh, handing a coconut by that, hand instead of throwing that was the that was the closest contact handing over a coconut that's all many people were killed okay so maximum you can go go near and drop coconuts and run away so that is what that is maximum that is a being allowed okay so that is a position of sentinels tell me um uh, is do you think that is right or wrong we shall continue continue sir it is uh, right for them because it has uh, helped them survive so far uh, as compared to survive so far exactly compared to the other tribes of uh, the andaman islands uh, okay. who hmm. one of them has already uh, got extinct and many of them are close to getting extinct with less number of people surviving okay so you mean to say isolation can be a good policy for the tribe yes sir uh, mainly because uh, as you had rightly mentioned they don't have any antibodies for the more modern diseases okay and uh, as we have seen from the great andamanis uh, who have mm. gone extinct mainly uh, because of warfare and disease mm. Mm. Uh, so if by staying isolated uh, they are able to protect them protect themselves and also from the other past experience where uh, mm. the british naval uh, person picked up few That's natives oh, and then they died they died because of disease mm. 
Okay. What is his name? Tom Pen. Portman, I think. Portman. Portman. <clears throat> Mention their names also. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> so Sentinelis is the most isolated and unwilling to let anybody in, and that is how they are able to protect. But the question is, why did India allow them? Why is India allowing them? After all, oh. they don't have huge weapons. If, if Indian government is keen, they can of course go in and then kill them. So it is also has to do with the extent of resource base. The okay. area that they are occupying is very, very small, small island. Very small island. Okay. Which they could not have done with Nicobar or with Great Andaman. Great Nicobar or Great Andaman. So they were in a position to lead such a life because they were on a small island and defend themselves and also um, nobody forced so far. But we don't know how far they are going to remain like that. Okay. And to which race do they belong? Negrito. Negrito. And how about these tribes? One, two, three, four, five. So all of them belong to exactly. Negrito. All of them Negrito only. And when did Negrito come this side? Around what time and from where? Possibly around uh, 65,000 years 65, ago. 65,000 years ago. Okay. And tell me, do you think they went from India to Nicobar Islands and Mars or from the other side? Uh, from the uh, Asian side. Uh... Yes, not from India side. Because from India side, it is very far off. It is from the other side. But how come they came to be classified uh, under India? They came, how, how come they became Indians? Because of British. Exactly. British because and Dutch. Uh, because of the British. So do you see what are all the things that the Britishers gave? Distant islands. Okay. So whatever Britishers had, India made a claim, this is all ours. Okay. So Negrito strain must have come around 70, uh, started around 70,000 and 65, but they may have reached there at 60 plus thousands of years. Okay. So that's about Sentinelis. Okay. Now, <clears throat> compare Jarva and Onja's position. <clears throat> Hmm. So, Praja, will you do this? Comparison between Jarvas and Onjas. Sir, I didn't read. You didn't read. read. Deepika? Sir, Onjas are mild uh, nature. Yes, and... Onjas were mild. And uh, where are they? Are these people neighbors, Onjas and Jarvas? Hmm. Where are Onjas? Are they in a great Andaman island? Onjas are in a little Andaman. Exactly. Onjas are in little Andaman island. Okay. Onjas are in little Andaman island. And they were mild. So what happened? So what is the position of Onjas now? Are they all over the island or something else happened to them? They are not all over the island. They are not all over the island. And then what happened? And uh, some interference was there from the outside uh, world. Okay. Some interference. Do you A know how many people are there on the island now? I think around 50 or so. No, I mean outsiders. How many outsiders are there and how many Onjas are there? That explains. 
From eighteen thousand are they? Eighteen thousand. And these people? Mm, I think fifty or two hundred. Okay, around hundred. Okay. So hundred plus eighteen uh, thousand. Is hundred plus eighteen thousand. So what does it mean? Who 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 is occupying the land? Is it owners or outsiders? Outsiders. Outsiders. Hundred plus eighteen thousand. There is no comparison. Who are these eighteen thousand? From where did they go? Bangladesh. Bangladesh. Uh, some from India. India and then. Uh, some from nicobar islands also nicobar islands okay and uh, where are these people are they still in the jungle or uh, is there a government intervention in that government intervention and intervention lot of people settlements are there public distribution system is there plantation timber mills okay Wage labor. That is just like what is going on in the main on the mainland India. Whereas these people were shunted to um, few corner, two corners, one in the northern end and another in the southern end. Okay. So, what do you make of a situation like that? I mean, what what do you feel? The, tell, tell me, what do you think of such a thing? I mean, is it right or wrong? Or after all, there are few people, and then they should be they should be made to settle in a small area. They don't own the land. After all, this land belongs to India. What do you think? I mean, many kinds of arguments are possible. What do you think? They are getting exploited by the government by providing all the support, but then their timber and other things. Uh, okay. So erosion is happening. Okay, resource so, erosion is happening. Culture is not. culture is uh, no uh, no protection. Culture changing, resource erosion. Their lifestyle changed. Sedentization. Okay. So they might also become extinct because they of. They may also become extinct, particularly given the low fertility rate. Okay, they may also become extinct. So jungle extinct, Great Andaman is extinct. Uh, Sentinel is they are there. Oranges may get extinct. okay so what do you think should be done then so they are staying on a very large area uh -huh. and that is why the government is exploiting them okay uh, maybe based on the number of people and so instead of like taking away everything from them uh -huh. they perhaps provide uh, some area and more uh, more yes. area okay then uh, See, we going by this approach you know there is an approach called assimilation isolation okay which do you think is better assimilation isolation or any intermediary thing i think intermediary is better because uh, there might be say medical treatments or things like that which will help them okay so and isolation in case of say uh, natural resources uh, uh, they need to be reserved for them uh, okay. for the tribes uh -huh. mm -hmm. and and maybe we one can find out what they are willing to take from the outsiders one may find out what they are willing to take from outside what they need say like medical treatments and those things okay but to a large extent i think it is uh, 
better to leave than isolated okay better to leave them isolated so, so basically government should protect them not for like taking their timber or their natural resources they have to support them i mean without exploiting them without exploiting them okay okay what do you know about the food do you think they have enough food so because of outside intervention uh, the uh, the land that they have occupied is decreasing, decreasing. so they might not get the wild animals that they are eating okay the fish and okay but traditionally they are uh, they have good resources i think that is one advantage with the andaman nicobar islands because yes. they have terrestrial resources as well as aquatic resources it is resource abundant resource abundant all kinds of it's a forest and ocean the huge area few people resource abundant isolated sir hmm so should we see what should our approach be in the context of climate change and also the pds thing diversity of diet factor they have diverse diet and now we are giving they have diet. diverse diet exactly now we are giving pda sugar yes, meat yes, yes, yes. we are already mainstream is affected with that oh uh, exactly and, mm. and also we give them tobacco also and then liquor informally addiction is a problem in all these cases currently jarvas are addicted great tendon is suffered because of addiction oranges addiction yes so these these are island tribes so in the context of climate change more disasters are going to come that as a threat 2004 tsunami effect and all cyclone how you the disasters are going to increase so what should we do in that context disasters i mean they are going you mean to say the entire area is going to be flooded and uh, so they will be affected and that is why we have to be kind it's too far fetched <laughs> no sir that could also we are, be, we are interested in their forest we don't have to think because of climate change every the, the entire area will be flooded and that is why we need to modernize them an aspect of uh, like their extinction will be accelerated climate change i because of climate uh, change resource erosion will be accelerated that is true extinction but, like this uh, extinction but, is also accelerated but that is uh, i don't think we need to worry about their extinction because of climate change i will think about our extinction because of climate change and this, they are offering the solution that how do you live with a, with least amount of resources and with least exploitation they are offering a model to learn it is not that we are safe and we should save them it is that we are unsafe and we should learn from them isn't it like that who is causing the climate change <laughs> it is not andaman is not causing the climate change it is we so i believe the most important thing that uh, the study of these tribes done in anthropology is to show the mainstream how to live better how to live in a sustainable way in fact going by their videos they are so healthy well built and remember they don't have any hospitals how many of us will survive without hospitals without medicine vitamin tablets that there is so many how are they able to survive so lots of leisure physical activity diverse food and work all and sustainable living so it is a mainstream that has to learn from them
So I don't think we have to think of what will happen to them because of climate change. So the point is we are not acting. We know that we should act on climate change. We are not acting and in the meanwhile. No, in the meanwhile, if we are concerned, you wake it from that place so that when it is flooded, they will have area. Isn't it? For the same people, they will have more area. Isn't it? See, basically, you know, in, in there is a discussion in terms of approach. Okay, you can take this question. And take sociology question. Okay, write this. Isolationism is a dominant feature of colonial tribal policy. Feature of colonial tribal policy. Okay. So tell me, what do you write for this? Isolationism is a dominant feature of colonial tribal policy. I can write probably sentinelies in, in the oh, line. You just look at that question. What does it mean? Dominant feature of colonial tribal policy. What is colonial tribal policy? First of all, where, what is to whom is colonialism referred to? British. And who is, huh? So the British time. So he's saying the so, British. So, they, hmm? yeah. so like most, so when like I think in in this eastern part also, sir. Uh, hmm. No, when, answer it in the context of Andaman uh, Nicobar Islands. Answer it. So tell me, did the Britishers isolate? So they did isolate uh, some oh, of the tribes, but they some, like some. No, you just tell me in, in in the context of the tribes that we discussed. Great Andamanese did they isolate? No, they did not. So what happened? Got extinct. They got extinct. Yeah. Mm. And what happened to other tribes? Ongs also, sir, they, they resource didn't erosion. Yeah. Resource erosion, depopulation, where is isolation? Isn't it? Yes. No, let us go specifically. See, there are things you can do things like this. Number one, look at Andaman Nicobar Islands, Central India, Northeast, and other places. You can be very specific. So, sir, you mean that we have to contradict the question directly, like because the language of the question is as in uh, that the the isolation part of the colonial uh, tribal policy. Ah, because some people said tribal uh, British policy is isolating uh, tribes because these people said the British government is involved in divide and rule. It is this crap that the books also teach. They, they, they are, if, if at all they isolated, it was meant to exploit resources. Or it was meant to help the tribes. It was meant to exploit resources. Exploit, so, resource, exploit resources is one. But uh, missionary, act, missionary activity. Sir, I think the no. main reason was also because they were not able to manage the tribes. Like it was not easy for them to uh, control true. the tribes. Thank you. But is divide and rule a policy at all? Is a strategy? For tribes, it was not, sir. Exactly. We'll discuss whether it was a strategy for others. But uh, tribes, how is that a strategy at all? They found it difficult to uh, apply the same administration across because they are different. And so they have gone for different administrative arrangements. And then within those administrative arrangements, whatever the exploitation possible, they did it. So administrative difficulty plus resources, that's all. 
they were not trying to divide nationalism divide and rule what is that isn't it so yes or no yes hmm divide and rule as policy what divide and rule you first of all claim everything as yours and then you say divide they have unified rather than divided otherwise how would andaman nicobar islands come to be a part of india in the first place how would northeast be a part of india how can one say divide and rule is it clear so definitely you can oppose but this is what some people have said and you can oppose that this is not what happened okay and we will discuss anthropologists and sociologists who took different stand on this issue but to say that they are doing this to divide and rule is a, is a, is absolutely ridiculous isolation to the extent they wanted to isolate to protect and then resource interest that's all <clears throat> is it clear sir do so, they also have a fifth and sixth schedule something like that for fifth the... and sixth came in post independence india this was about colonialism and then tell me isn't what we are doing colonialism so how can we assume that the colonialism ended when the britishers left and what is the policy we are doing is it what is the, what is this for sir hmm i think sir sunil is also asking this are there special provisions for andaman and nicobar tribes the special provisions they come under excluded uh, uh, excluded partially excluded and excluded this comes under excluded i don't know exactly about anuman but basically they it was made a penal colony very few people were allowed and then they went about settling more and more people but otherwise there was no normal traffic between india and uh, these islands so during the british time more settlements emerged otherwise they were excluded so that's why you see that 1800 map tribes are all over, all over. But what happened demographic composition changed so there was no regular administration at all there were just tribes and made a penal colony and so some jail administration and some military and some settlements started from mainstream and then industrialization started so from day one colonialism okay in the northeast also northeast also we cannot say that is a part of that had been a part of india central indian case is different so northeast is a different case and andaman nicobar is a different case they came as a came because of the british uh, rule over there so mainstream india the hindi belt claimed that this whole thing is ours otherwise they never belonged okay so if there is some truth at all about divide and rule it can only be about central india so go specifically this is northeast this is central india and this is this we discussed one forager from central india who is that beror beror exactly mm. beror now is more integrated and maybe beror may be difficult to be isolated because they are in the central india difficult to isolate so you can look at geographically 
you can go by case by case and then see whether that general statement is right or wrong or where it can be right so if a tribe is closely integrated maybe isolation now may be difficult and sometimes isolation may be easy so why we are doing diverse tribes is that so that you will have you will think more specifically what is the present situation what was the past and what can be the future is it clear sir sir i have ah. a question sir ah, nikhil hmm. sir uh, so i always wonder sir about this isolation strategy and uh, the uh, strategy of assimilating the tribes hmm. uh, sir uh, so the exploitation part i understand but sometimes we also think uh, no uh, like you the, can't find to andaman nicobar islands now we'll discuss yes. other things later sir no uh, sir one Mm. Uh, in this uh, case, isolation is possible, but not done, and definitely not to divide and rule, but for uh, commercial interests. That's all. Sir, I was talking specifically about Birhor, actually, sir. But we will yeah. we will examine it later. Yes. Okay. Because sir. we will look at this debate uh, tribe by tribe or area by area. sir uh, my question is uh, since we are saying that we are colonizing can we also say that we are looking at ethnic approach rather than ethnic approach because for them we are colonizers but for ourselves we are not so can we look at it in that way also that is true one can think in terms of yes you are right ethnic identity yes okay. Okay. in fact northeast people call somebody from delhi as indian so if you are coming from Uh, Delhi, they will say, "Are you coming from India?" It's like that. So that is why you are preparing very, very seriously for an examination where you will be like a colonial administrator from the emic viewpoint, from the people whom you whom you are going to administer. Okay, you believe you you have dreams that you are going to uh, you know help them. administer do all kinds of things social service all that but the best thing they'll expect you sometimes is that will you please run away from our place if you can make sure nobody else will come in your place so this is colonialism colonialism is about imposing your power and using their resources against their interests that is what colonialism is where is we in this it is they when we said we are the people are there did they say yes we are <laughs> so who is this we the people of india definitely andamanis are not at all included in that we so we need to look at the nature of the state this is the nature of the state jarvas want to interact with the... exactly now come to jarvas okay compare and contrast jarvas and onjas tell me what is the most important development that affected the lives of jarvas highway the andaman trunk road andaman trunk road it is a, across the whole island atr is passing through and man trunk road and it is true that they reserved some territory to jarvas 
but then the people would love to go that side and then see them and who can prevent <laughs> will any of us be not curious of course we will be curious so that is why it became like human safari so many tourist operators would take to watch jarwas and meanwhile lot of resource erosion settlement so great andaman is gone and jarwas occupied part of their territory and now jarwas also under threat poaching hunting more settlements traffic lots of crowd so now they are not able to maintain their own life so some activists are saying so they want a different life now they want to be like others so what is the problem that i mean what do you think about jarwas what is the most likely future of jarwas will they going to be isolated or will they be just like andamanes or oranges they might get assimilated hmm they might be assimilated they may be assimilated that's very likely but sir that assimilation might come with a lot of uh, problems because there was this incident about this dancing girl so hmm. uh, so it is it will always be a difference a stratification hmm. they, that is another thing you know people discuss assimilation versus isolation okay let us discuss those things when there is a people are not trying to assimilate actually there are two things people are interested in the resources not in assimilation and the assimilation doesn't suggest assimilation in what way assimilation is most often marginalization they are not assimilated as equals assimilated as marginalized communities so the problem with assimilation versus isolation debate is that one is not looking at resources people debate as if they want to know how we should treat them or what is in their interest often it is not their interest it is the mainstream interest and the interest is resources so that is why these are theoretical debates if they are not being allowed to be isolated if they are not isolated it is because of the resources if they are assimilated not out of love it is because they can be marginalized so the core issue is resources so it is the outsider's interest in the resources so it is not really a theoretical issue of whether they should be isolated uh, or assimilated and which is in their own interest it is not like that things are being done in the interests of those who have power and those who have power have i on their resources sunil what do you say yes or no sunil sir uh, do we mostly denied but that is the real reason mostly deny i mean we deny but that is the real reason yeah that's true that is the real reason and then write like this only we are not hiding anything i mean we just write like this right. no problem absolutely no problem there is only one topic you are not supposed to write frankly that's kashmir everything else you can be frank <laughs> everything else we are very very liberal only in one case we are not <laughs> the decent political system you know you need not worry about it so uh, hmm? what about the their immunity 
because there are very few of them if you try to assimilate them exactly they get ex they can get extinct mixture get extinct but essentially we need to understand what is the real issue and the real issue is resources that's what i am trying to highlight you are really not worried issue. of their extinction or survival exactly we are not worried about anything <laughs> So the idea of divide and rule doesn't it is it not meaningless when you think of Andaman and Nicobar Islands? It's meaningless. And then we can't say the colonialism ended then, and now this is India. Doesn't make any sense. Basically, whether the locals are being helped. by the local resources if they are being helped that is not colonialism why are we not calling akbar colonialism and uh, akbar rule colonialism and british rule only colonialism because britishers are using the resources here for their benefit somewhere else and akbar was not using medieval kings did not use so that was not colonialism so colonialism refers to use of resources by outsiders against the interests of the locals whoever does it okay so in that sense in the context of andaman and nicobar islanders colonialism continues okay so that is about andaman islands now go to nicobar islands nicobar islands hmm. vishal ye tell me how many tribes are there on nicobar islands did you go through the material uh no sir only the first three i have gone first three okay sweta yes sir did you go through the material nico so only it's so only andaman island tribes i have gone through okay you didn't go through this okay deepika sunit did you go through nicobar yes sir okay tell me who are the tribes sir nicobaris is there nicobaris and onges no nicobar Sir, one more is there. I, I... Champagne. Champagne. Yeah, champagne. Yeah, champagne. Champagne. Okay. Okay. Tell me, who are more isolated after uh, Saint Nilis in this entire group? Sir, champagne are there. Champagne are more isolated. Okay. Because that is a Nicobar Island. On this side, there are Nicobaris, and then here and there some settlements. Ten settlements. And what is the strangest thing about Shomp and uh, settlements, Sunil? Uh, If you go to a Shomp and village, how many people will you will you find? Very few are there. Households are there. Very few means how many? Is it possible that you meet only two people, husband and wife? Yes, because even the survey they couldn't find the number they said they are. <laughs> exactly, that is an interesting seventy point. <laughs> exactly, so they were estimating that they might be two hundred, hmm. but they actually met only seventy eight. It seems after forty days of investigation. So it seems here and there they are hanging around. Okay. But about Shompen, we know at least the settlements are like this. About Sentinelis, we don't know. They may be, may be from pictures from from the top aerial photography. Even they might get hit sometimes. Mm, we don't know exactly. Of course, some of them may be under the, in the jungle. The jungle is thick. 
so uh, household and few individuals there can be one household there can be many households so here and there they are living and tell me among the andaman nicobar islands who are all the people who are using who are uh, developing who are going for fire through hand drill method hand drill these are going these people huh? are going Champion are going. Next, who else might be going? Jarvas, no. Jarvas now have Jarvas at one time in 1991 they were probably even now some people interior. Okay. Sentinelis. Even Sentinelis. Ah, yeah. uh, Sentinelis. Sentinelis have no contact, so they they cannot. But sir, have... we don't know exactly Sentinelis because they use metal and all also, right? They have yes. metal, but how will they produce? fire from metal so, because we have not like seen them so maybe we don't know exactly so. that's true but we haven't seen any of them but it's about guessing more slicely is that they will be doing normal methods stick and uh, because i mean other than match box what is the way to produce uh, fire so this stone uh, stones here people is stone also exactly and this hand drill method is supposed to be more advanced than stone because in stone you need to do stones and then you put something dry but this is a, in this is a wood and wood something drilled and it becomes hot ah uh, it is much better than the hitting two stones so hand drill method is an advanced method compared to hitting two stones uh, trying to create a spark in handle method you are not trying to create a spark it is burnt almost like a burnt and then you put some dry and then send air so fire picks up so through friction you create something like a coal and then you put something dry on the coal and then air then picks up fire so sentinelis must be doing it the shompen were doing it as it, as you saw in a video and in a photograph and jarvas were doing it in 1990s and some of them might be doing it even now okay but andamalis andamanis advanced and onjes advanced um, andamanis the present day andamanis okay and nicobaris are like civilized okay civilized because of christianized Excellent. proper dress proper houses well educated some of them doctors engineers okay so i raised this question that uh, if uh, nicobaris could be so transformed because of the christianity why don't we allow christianity Isn't it a good idea? What did you think about it, Sunil? Sir, uh, that is true. But I also felt that if uh, Nicobaris are Christian, mm. wouldn't they have some sort of influence on uh, Shompens also? But that didn't happen, even though they are in insanity. So I am not very sure that Christianity would help them. The reason I find is you mean why are... the no you. Uh... see these people nicobaris may not have generated christian missionaries so you cannot go and then convert them you send okay. professional missionaries yeah, that might help them ah uh, professional missionaries for example do christian kamas and reddies uh, uh, give christianity to some other caste no So it is a missionary activity, which means training, understanding the culture, developing language, uh, changing, and making making Christianity compatible to earlier religion. A lot of professionalized training is needed. It is not simply a matter of influencing. So they are so much better off, and that is what one person tried recently to to bring Christianity to Saint Nicholas. that person was killed and i am sure many hindutva activists were happy see look 
but what is wrong it was an adventure maybe that was good sir still bond nicobar is have a greater influence on these uh, champion people they may have influence but that is different from converting them to christianity but if nicobar is know that we were also something like that to won't they help try to help them no that the religion doesn't spread that easily so a missionary activity can and not only shampen missionary activity could have been done regarding onges or jarvas what prevents because missionaries will take the initiative and go all out and try to do things what is wrong it is an assimilation no doubt part of it is assimilation but assimilation done more carefully retaining certain things of their culture changing religion and uh, bringing modernization developing written language look at the christianity in the north east much more advanced in the same way nicobar is here so this is how religion can do positive things if it is not hinduism so when hinduism goes it divides people allocates caste introduces untouchability <gasps> So which religion goes there and studies the language and develops the scripts and teaches okay. only Christianity and that is good. Okay, so basically Christianity is introducing communication, communication with the modern world. they are not losing their identity nagas are christianized but did they lose their identity no in fact they have become more assertive that's good more conscious of their rights that is good at least after claiming that they are indians can't we give better religion better way of life isn't it yes sir mm. so christianity is a modernizing force unlike other religions which means the, that is a systematic way of bringing about social change much more peaceful rights conscious modernizing huge social change identity maintained and earlier it believes continue as the sources of identity and all this done by some people who are committed if somebody is providing a different higher religion and then doing all those positive things that is good but if nobody is doing and somebody is doing these good things then he should be encouraged isn't it yes sir definitely mm. in andhra pradesh difference between malas and marigas is that malas are more advanced it is because more malas are converted it is that Uh, correlation between Christianity and uh, progress. Why is higher literacy rate in North East Christianity? Higher literacy rate in Mizoram Christianity. So, if we are really committed for goals like health, education, and modernization and equality. Christianity is a religion that brings them yeah, with ease.
in any way the entire indian intelligentsia is educated in christian missionary schools all these ideas came through the that's those schools only and they did not impose christianity on them developing a script is a great development then education health working out so many things related to tradition converting them changing them modifying them developing communication system that is what social service is that is what compassion is but hindus take them as some kind of some alien people changing their religion i don't know why they should have such an attitude if you want to do it fine you do it but if you are not doing it and others are doing it encourage Sir, were there also some attempts for? Uh, How do you answer this question in the light, in the context of Andaman Nicobar Islands? We'll do this again when we are doing Northeast. Okay, analyze different views. Different views on integration and autonomy. of tribes in india sir were there also some attempts from christian missionaries which government did not allow was it the case yeah now christian missionaries are not allowed there in post independent india otherwise many would have gone to shompens and changed them or other or other tribes also they are not allowed sir in all the andaman and nicobar islands or just yes. this uh, in fact in rest of india also they are not allowed but uh, enough of indigenous christianity developed in northeast so conversion could continue in post independent india also but otherwise foreign missionaries are not allowed now you some are there they were they had they came long ago so so tell me how can different views on integration and autonomy first of all what do you call integration and what do you call autonomy what is meant by autonomy the freedom to decide for themselves hmm? Huh? Freedom to decide for for themselves. Exactly, exactly. Who is given full autonomy now, or who have been taking the autonomy by force? Sentinels. Sentinels. Only sentinels are autonomous. Okay. But the rest, there is no autonomy. sir by autom- autonomy we mean by economic and political autonomy exactly economic and political culture and resources think of two things culture and resources culture includes identity ability to retain their culture and resources that is autonomy their own decision making sentinel is are allowed they are autonomous but how about others loss of autonomy is it integration no 
it is it is worst kind of assimilation marginalization so you define what kind of integration is it what are the what is the impact great andaman island great andamans this what andaman is this what happened jungle this what happened onj this what happened jarwas this what happened so this is resource erosion no help this is not integration and to the extent there is assimilation this is marginalization assimilation means making the other like us that is assimilation marginalization like us but at lower level like us but at lower level that is marginalization not only that you can write you can critic government policy but that you are expected to critic you are expected to critic there are absolutely no problems in criticizing okay so this is marginalization marginalization and resource erosion there is no autonomy and in fact we don't even think about autonomy if we are in the context of these tribes so it is a completely uneven power relationship this is also a case of state and stateless tell me which concept is relevant here one concept that we discussed when we were discussing Uh, concept of tribe caste tribe and some other concept which we said is globally relevant acculturation huh? what will this group be these groups be called globally indigenous exactly indigenous so when you are writing about indigenous give all these examples this is the problem of the indigenous people see the only thing you can say positively about india is that this is a universal phenomena india is not the only villain here this is a universal phenomena so this is a problem of state versus stateless problem of indigenous problem of civilized versus uncivilized you can use the word uncivilized in a scientific way uncivilized doesn't mean they are bad civilized means town cities scripts these are uncivilized so civilized versus uncivilized state versus stateless indigenous it's also colonialism and then think of two dimensions culture and resources and within culture think in terms of identity also sometimes culture can change but identity can remain people may want to change the culture but retaining identity nagas changed their culture so much but they want to retain their identity so is it clear so in the same way we'll do northeast and central india and there is nothing more and let me tell you whatever we are doing they can be they can be uh, answered in in the polity section also in sociology politics because this shows the nature of the state and i would say ngs 
ethnicity nature of the state okay you examine a system in terms of the weakest in terms of the vulnerabilities okay the way you examine family from gender secularism from mm. muslims the nature of the state from the powerless very secularism here for example when christianity is so much doing so much good why should these things be banned at all so it is through these cases you will understand the nature of the state nature of the political system theory wise all seems good when mm. we come to case by case basis all our hypocrisy is exposed ah exactly hypocrisy in the sense that knowledge is generated from the view point of the dominant this is an upper caste hindi speaking mm, upper class hindu india this is what it is all information is produced to satisfy these people <laughs> and male <laughs> so that is how knowledge is produced that is what foucault said knowledge is power power shapes knowledge and that is why that is what marx materialism is from economy comes power and from power uh, knowledge that is why to him only economy is the base and everything else is a product of the base in fact they teach these things also but then when it comes to specific we say we are different i see in the interviews you know i mean people are very very critical of what un is doing what america is doing that this this one single question on what india is doing oh they say oh my god so we are like this disgusting answers america is unjust us un is unjust nobody is following climate change rules that this but what is india doing sir we are doing great things everybody is very very offensive only india is a peace loving country <laughs> so we can't blame them the material they read to us that is true that is true that is why this time i am making current affairs program as part of interview course going for object to type test elaborate program because instead of being irritated by their views i thought <laughs> teach and then even after that they don't listen then maybe i have right to be irritated but otherwise when they are exposed to only particular kind of information how can i be irritated by them that is what i thought so i'm giving them opportunity <laughs> so what is the whole people. analysis you know the whole thinking comes to an end on a single question on india <laughs> so on various issues the state also has its own argument sir what is that so on various issues the state also has its own argument sir like various issues state also has its own side of argument sir that is what i have felt that is true state has side but uh, how how do you do with this with these marginalized uh, people state side is it not the majority view i mean dominant view it, you can't say it is a majority view yes it is a dominant like for example sir this forest right no, act for example for example what is going on in andaman is it not colonialism it is but sir when they are exploiting the forest resources the yeah. argument is that because of this huge capitalism and the resources we are yeah. using the no, need that of is, people just this confined to andaman nicobar islands now for that also sir sir so then like it is us 
you have to think that that is a nation and uh, jarwa should be should feel happy about uh, uh, air conditioning in delhi for luxuries in delhi does it make any sense it does not sir but doesn't. so the, why not call it uh, colonialism is india it happy is about the wealth of the responsible one is not just the state but us also that is what i am trying to say no i am not that's fine i am not making the distinction i am not i am talking about the knowledge systems that's fine that's okay i'm talking about the knowledge systems i'm not saying the government versus the people no it is not in that sense i'm talking about the view points talk about the view points only am i clear nikhil sir hmm. it is not about the government people who are working in the government versus the people it is not like that i'm talking about the view point the knowledge the way knowledge is produced and how we take it blindly it is like that only